when I've said earlier, when I've been doing these things about the various bits and bobs of Windows, the the more important a thing is in Windows, the more ways there are to get to it. The task manager, for example, there's 10 or a dozen different ways of getting to the task manager. Well, task scheduler is pretty important as well. There's five or six ways that I can think of off the top of my head to get to the task scheduler. First of all, if you go deep within the settings, uh, Windows and I takes you to the settings and deep within the settings, you can find the task scheduler. You can run, go to run and in there, T-A-S-K-S-C-H-D without an E, task good dot M-S-C, that'll take you to the task scheduler. You can open a command line and at the command line type tasksgood.msc and that'll take you there. If you go to this PC and right mouse manage, now right mouse manage on this PC is one of the best kept secrets in Windows. Right mouse manage lets you do all sorts of grooviness. There's the task scheduler, but also the device manager the performance manager, you didn't know there was a performance manager. Disk management lets you format and rearrange your disks and your partitions and all that groovy stuff, all under that manage tab. Right mouse, this PC and manage, really, really useful. But the best and simplest way to get to the task scheduler is to go down here and type SCED. S-C-H-E-D, I'm writing it in Norwegian, S-C-H-E-D, and it turns up. And there's the task scheduler. Now I'm going to be really, really clever here and share my screen again differently because that's how clever I am. Let you see this for a trick. Share screen, task scheduler, share. So you don't need to see the rest of my screen. If I do that, then you see it bigger because I'm playing with the task scheduler now. When you open the task scheduler, this is what you get. It's in three panels. This is what's called a Microsoft management pane, Microsoft management tool. And there's umpteen of these for disks and for tasks and for services and for all the internal stuff of Windows always appears in one of these management panels. The scheduler starts here and there's a a hierarchy of, like it looks like a hierarchy of folders, like you get when you're digging through directories and stuff. And I recommend you get into that very gently, one layer at a time, right? The top layer lets me know what's going on, how many things I've got. Currently I've got 134 tasks scheduled to happen in this PC. If you go to yours, you'll probably find there's 100 to 150 tasks scheduled on your PC, some of which you know about and some of which you don't know about. Over here to the right, it'll let me start, stop, create, schedule, all that good stuff. I'll explain that in a moment. And if I then go to the task scheduler library, which is the next one down, then here at the top are the things that are scheduled to happen. Now, the first one here is my bin reminder. It sends me an email once a week to tell me that the bins need to go out because I'm usually sitting doing something else on Thursday nights and I forget about the bins. And if I forget about the bins, death can follow swiftly and terribly in this house. So you've got to not forget about the bins. So I put a bin reminder to myself. However, I've updated it. So that bin reminder is now disabled. And I'll show you the updated one in a minute. And then below it, there are two from Corel. Now, I use WordPerfect as my word processor. I prefer WordPerfect. I've been using it since 19 oatmeal. But when you install WordPerfect, it installs these naggy things that remind you to update and remind you that you're, you could be using the latest version and all that garbage every time you close it or every time you open it. And that there is the tasks to remind you. And so I've simply disabled those so I don't get those nag screens. 
And further down, there's the googly ones, that's Google's update. But there's Microsoft Edge wanting to update itself every time I turn on the computer. Or Microsoft Edge wanting to update every time I try and use somebody else's browser. So I've got them disabled as well. And all I need to do is point at one of these and right mouse it. And I can enable it. Right mouse. I can disable it. And if they're disabled, they don't happen. I don't get nagged about Microsoft's Edge browser because I want nothing to do with Microsoft's Edge browser. And PM task is, I've got no idea what that is. And RTKPT, I've got no idea what that is. So I'll ask it about its properties. At any time a user gets logged on, this gets run and it's the real tech audio. So it's obviously the real tech audio's control panel applet. Didn't know it was there, but now I know what it is. If I go below the task schedule library, these are the ones that are currently scheduled. And below that, there's all these other ones. There you are. Those are ones from Lenovo, which is this is a Lenovo computer that I'm sitting at. And that's Lenovo saying, I want to upgrade your machine or check that your drivers are up to date and all that stuff. And it occasionally happens. Microsoft, wait till you see this. There are half a dozen different Microsoft products. And if I go to Windows, whoosh, there are hundreds of Microsoft Windows things that all want to phone home every so often. So I can go through these and decide that I really need Microsoft's time synchronization to be forcing my, in case this is a laptop and I move into a different time zone, do I need to upgrade to the new time zone? That's taking memory, it's taking cycles, it's taking time, it doesn't need to be there. So I can go in there and disable that, whereby the time synchronizes. And if I find things that I don't need to have, I can disable them or enable them. And whilst I'm here to explain how you actually set up a, a, schedule, a scheduled task for yourself, I suggest that one of the best things you can do is go through this, this and disable all the garbage, all the stuff from Microsoft and Lenovo and Microsoft Edge and the browsers and your printer. There's stuff in here from my Xerox printer whereby it phones home and it checks my for levels of ink cartridges and all that stuff. And if you turn all that stuff off, then you stop getting an awful lot of these pop-ups in your computer. You know the things that pop up when you're trying to log on or pop up when you're trying to log off? They all come out of here. So if I go in here and look at checks, you will see that here's checks, tasks. Now, most of these are to do with backing up the database, backing up my normal documents. How about reconcile documents? Now, if I run that, it actually runs a program that checks that all the documents that are on this machine, that I've got another copy elsewhere and that I can restore it and that I'll be okay and I won't lose anything. There's the new version of the bin night one. Runs at six o'clock every Thursday. Let's have a wee look at its properties. And what it does is it scrapes South Ayrshire's website, calculates the color of the bin that's to go out, send an email to check and send a pop-up reminder to this machine. So as long as this machine's on on a Thursday night, that's what it's going to do. How is it triggered? It's triggered weekly at 1800 hours every Thursday of every week, starting a couple of weeks ago. The action, it starts a program and it's a program called PowerShell and it runs it with the argument run D drive scripts bin night dot PS1. And start it if the computer's running an AC. I don't know why it defaults to stop it if, if, if this battery machine ever goes on to battery power. This machine can't run in battery power. It's a desktop computer, but that's what it does. 
It makes your, for your laptop, if your laptop's running in batteries, you can stop it for doing anything like that. It allows it to be run in demand. So if I want to right now, I can run this property. In fact, I'll just cancel that for a minute. Right mouse or run it. Contacts Air South Ayrshire, gets the stuff and it works out. It's a blue bin this week. So I've got a blue bin to put out on Thursday night. And back to the properties. There's the settings. If it misses, if this machine is not on at six o'clock on a Thursday night, then it can make it that as soon as it gets a chance, it runs this task or it leaves it till next week or it abandons, stops doing it all together if it misses it once. Depending on what the job is, that might be the appropriate way to proceed. And it can also stop it if it takes more than three days to finish. If I can't get through to South Ayrshire Council within three days, then probably the button's been pushed somewhere. So that's that's fair enough. And if I want to log how often it's running, whether it was successful or not, I can do that. I don't need to log how often I put the bins out, so I don't have logging turned on for this. If I want to create a new one of these, then I simply right mouse and I can create a basic task. Now create a basic task, let's do that. And I want to be doing my Sunday Zoom. And this is going to be logging to the Sunday Zoom session. Next, how often do I want this to happen? Weekly, next. I want it to start on this Sunday, but I want it to start at 1400. So I can make that be 14, comma, where are we? Colon zero, zero, colon zero, zero. And I want it to recur every week on a Sunday. Next, and I want it to start a program and the program I'm going to start is called Zoom.exe. And I can start the arguments. I can put in, you know, the, the Zoom list that e Davey sends us with the, his Zoom ID. I could put that in there so it actually starts inside that Zoom session. But if my machine suddenly starts Zoom up at 2 o'clock on a Sunday, I'm going to realise, oh, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be on a Zoom session. So that should be enough. However, rather than start a program, I could equally well send myself an email or just display myself a message. But nearly nowadays, it's nearly always just start a program and finish. And now I've got Sunday Zoom as one of my scheduled events. The other thing I can do there is instead of starting Actually, if I press that and run, it'll kick me out of this Zoom session. So I'm not going to do that just at the minute. Instead of create a basic task, I can create a task. And creating a task is exactly the same, except for instead of starting it to a schedule, I can start it when you log on or when the computer starts up or when the computer's not doing anything else or when the computer does a certain event. So if I try to print something or I try to open my email or, or whatever. So this does a lot more. There's a lot more options. And I can do a lot more convoluted things with it in terms of how it starts. And similarly, the actions, there's more complicated actions. But generally, that's simple. Go to your, your own group there, right mouse. By the way, that's another thing. That checks. I created that. I went to the one above and I went right mouse, new folder. And the new folder is going to be random nonsense. Okay. So I've now got a random nonsense folder and I can start and create tasks in my random nonsense folder. So I can have technical tasks, I can have backup tasks, I can have tidying up folders tasks, I can have emailing people tasks, all that sort of stuff. If I want to automate my life, I can do it in here. 
And that's the basics. That's it. That's really all I need to do. 